seven o'clock, we'll call the meeting to order. Bill's character. Karen, can you please take the roll? Sure. Commissioner Young? Here. Commissioner Keene? Commissioner Black? Commissioner Brink? Here. Commissioner Miller? Here. Commissioner Batty? Here. And President Langness? Present. We have a quorum. Next on the agenda is to the Pledge of Allegiance. We ask those that are able to join us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next is to approve the agenda. Is there a motion? I'd like to make a motion uh, uh, to, to the commissioners with a, with a motion to remove uh, line item number eight, the MU3 zoning discussion item from the agenda to a later date when there's more members available to take part in the discussion. Is there a second? I'll second. There's a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Ms. Yen? Is this something you'd like to discuss in an introductory manner tonight or just not discuss it at all? Uh, um, I think based on uh, discussion, uh, um, we'd like to see have more members because there's a lot of uh, items that have to be discussed as part of this. And instead of having read it to rediscuss it twice when there's more members available, we'd like to just move it to a later date. Thank you. It was also a staff recommendation. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Second vice president saying aye. Aye. No. Motion carries. Easy night. Item number five, approved planning commission meeting minutes from December 11th. Is there a motion? Mr. Chair, I would move to you approve the planning commission meeting minutes from December 11th, 2019. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 No? Motion carries. <clears throat> I'm sorry, was there any abstentions on that? No? We had all five. Item number six, interim use permit for agricultural use in B2, MXR3, and MXR1 zoning districts. We'll have a public hearing for this and then consider an interim use permit application Donovan, do you want to kick us off first? And then for those in the audience or those um, that have applied for the permit, we'll give you an opportunity after staff presents to us and we have any questions answered directly from them and then we'll ask you to come up to the podium. We'll hold the public hearing after that. Donovan? Yes, sir. Commissioner um, and Planning Commission, I'd like to present the interim use permit application from Mark Smith who's present with us this evening, um, to, to conduct agricultural activities, ag agricultural uses, as uh, interim use in the B2, MXR, and MXR1 zoning district areas of his parcel that's located uh, basically behind Menard, south of Broadway. It's a total of eight PIDs um, seen here on your screen. And it, it's approximately a 142 acres, and um, uh, Mr. Smith had a, um, this interim use permit for these areas here, this, these parcels um, that was approved in 2012 and expired in the last day of 2019. And so um, Mr. Smith seeks now to ex um, extend that, um, and the ac actual application in, does include um, this southern parcel, unlike the two, 2012 application. The, as mentioned, um, the, there are th three zoning districts. Here are the B2 in red, MXR3 here, which is the mixed residential, and then the MXR1 here. Um, and what he's been doing is basically, you know, cultivation is it, Corn and wheat, just basic, um, you know, pasture crops, 
Um, and there's about 70 acres or so of upland, so there's extensive wetlands within the property. And in fact, the, the, the 2012 interim use permit that's in your um, packet um, does indicate some of the conditions that involve you know, buffering um, and keeping some, some distance from those, those wetland areas. And um, what is you know, different about this um, application, you know, currently um, the way that I'm presenting it is that, you know, in the 2012 um, interim use permit, they, did, they uh, presented as a findings of fact that the use is allowed um, at, you know, as interim use in the respective zoning district at the discretion of the city council. Um, based on the guidance of the current city attorney, um, we you know, now actually add these uses into the zoning um, code um, if, you know, if, if, if recommended then approved by um, city council so that it's actually listed. Um, and so it, it's a little bit different and that's why we have the actual, the zoning text amendment is also accompanying this, this application. Um, and of course, you know, um, they go together and, and obviously, uh, you know, when it comes down to actual adoption that, you know, the zoning text amendment, I mean, the interim use permit is, is predicated upon the adoption of the zoning text amendment as well. Um, and what is different um, also is that um, this time Mr. Smith actually has ex uh, applied to expand the, uh, the agriculture use into this MXR1 in this the southernmost um, uh, parcel of the property, and it's a staff recommendation not to allow this, um, since the MXR1 zone is pretty, uh, you know, it's fairly common throughout the city, and um, I, I wouldn't want to put in a, be in a situation where we have more of this interim type use in these ag zones that are essentially owned for, zoned for residential um, and to be part of the city's growth in the future. And so the, uh, the staff recommendation is to um, extend the, the interim use permit for the properties that are zoned B2 highway business and MXR3 with um, eight conditions, um, which are the eight conditions that uh, are from the 2012 um, IUP, um, with the one change being that the uh, expiration date is December 31st, 2029. Um, and at this, at this time, I'd like to take any questions from the Planning Commission. So why the change? Um, from you know why what what's uh, I'm trying to understand why this uh, adding it you know adding it in as actual um, uses in the you know the zoning text amendment as I'm just curious what about this has kind of initiated that change from our standpoint because that isn't anything he's asked for is it you know he he has asked for it. Well, no, I understand he's asked for the, you know, the, the right to do this, but the whole zoning text amendment, why aren't we just doing it the same way we did before? I mean, what, I'm just curious what, what generated the change in, in the way we're oh. looking at it legally. Oh, oh um, it's, uh, I think it's something of a legal tidiness the city attorney prefers. Um, and I'm, you know, I don't, I don't see an okay. issue with I it. I mean, that's fine. Just, I, I'm not... It, I'm not vehemently against, and I was just curious why, why well enough wasn't good enough, you know? Yeah. Okay. Question again. Okay. So this is not the comp plan that we have submitted to the Met Council. This is not our, I'll call it the new comp plan, correct? This is the current zoning district, you know, districts, the zoning map. In the new comp plan that we submitted to the Met Council, which which has not been finally approved by our council. 
The comp plan has the 2040 comp plan has not been approved by council. Yes. Okay. And this is not the 2040 comp plan land uses. Correct. Okay. Um, the zoning code. You said that this is since 2012 when when this was previously approved. There was a change in the zoning code, and when was that? No, no, no. I'm saying that um, it's the city's practice now, city staff recommendation to include, um, actually list the, the interim use. Um, I can get into, you know, as in within the within the zoning code, rather than just have it as just kind of the. Um, I can show you. You know, for instance, in the highway business, there's this kind of a catch-all phrase um, in, in the interim uses, uses as determined by the Planning Commission and City Council. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what they use, and you, know, you can see referenced in that, the, the 2012 interim use permit. Um, now the, you know, the thing, you know, the recommendation of city attorney is that we actually list that as, you know, agriculture uses you know, within there. And perhaps um, I think one thing I neglected to say is that, you know, as part of uh, Mr. Smith's application, it, he, you know, this is consistent with the 2012, is that he's applying for this so he can continue his, you know, agricultural activities there until, you know, development, you know, conditions are favorable. Because he, he is a home builder. I mean, that's, he's not a farmer. If you can, he might look like a farmer. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> um, but, uh, and so that's, but, but which is within this, you know, city zoning code that interim uses are, can be allowed, you know, prior to development or, you know, in these specific cases. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, a couple of your proposed um, conditions are um, ag crops only. Um, how do you currently define ag crops? The way the zoning district does, which does not include livestock, um, and also there's a um, condition there that no agricultural buildings are allowed. Um, I'll show you. So agricultural use, land whose use is devoted to the production of horticulture and nursery stock, fruits of all kinds, vegetables, forage, grains, bees, and apiary products and raising domestic farm animals. Um, however, um, but that's, you know, this condition is the allow the farming of agricultural crops only, so it would exclude that um, d domestic farm animal use. I didn't see the definition of, of ag crops in there, and so we do have the agricultural use definition, mm -hmm. uh, which does include critters. So if he, um, during the 10 years, wanted to fence it and pasture something there that would not be allowed? That Even though our ag use definition, which we do have in the code, would allow those things. But um, we could define it more clearly for ag, ag crops. You know, I'm, I'm comfortable with that, but you know, we could more clearly define it. Okay. Uh, your second um, condition is no open storage of equipment. Would that include, for instance, a combine overnight? I, would, I, I wouldn't count that as storage if it was simply there during, you know, during a work season, okay. work time, I should say. Okay, because it's, it's not unusual to you know, park a tractor there and, and, and have a, after you've, after you've, you've planted and you, know, you want to cultivate a month later, leave your tractor there instead of dragging it back to, to wherever. So for short periods of time. Um, and then I would like more information from the applicant later um, regarding the buffers that are required and from you on the reported heavy equipment and land raising that was done and where that is within the rules and any enforcement action. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Other questions of staff? 
Okay. We'll invite the applicant. If you have anything to say, we'll just ask you to come up to the podium. If you don't, then that's fine too. Are there questions of the applicant from commissioners? Sure. So what, mm -hmm. so what kind of crops? I mean, is it just regular beans? I, I am going to ask you to come up to the podium to answer so those watching on television can hear you, though. Good evening, Chairman, Commissioners. Appreciate you having me here. Um, the answer to the question on the crops, We've been just doing basically either wheat, soybeans, or corn. You kind of alternate, otherwise you deplenish the soils, which you probably sound like you are aware of. Um, so it's whatever the um, guy, I don't do the farming. We have been um, leasing out the land to a farmer that's been just doing the change over whatever he feels is the best crop that's mm -hmm. for the soil from, based on what was done the previous year. In your lease agreement with the farmer, are you requiring them to maintain the buffers yes. around the wetlands? Yes. And how are you enforcing that, sir? Um, I just tell them to do it. They've been good at that stuff. I mean, they've been staying away from that. Um, so they, they have been, if, if anything, they've gone beyond the buffers, and that's been more of the problem. If you keep, you know, the reason we farm this, basically, I'm not making any money off. It's more just to keep the, the buckthorn from growing and all the weeds from growing so it's maintainable. You know, when we, 12 years ago or 15 years ago at the site, we had poplars and everything that had overgrown the site and it was, it had been farmed before and then it got neglected and it was just, the only way to keep it under control is to farm it, so. Um, and what happens, it's been wetter and there was garbage out there so the, far, the farmer kept, people dump stuff out there notoriously so they, these buffers get bigger, not because I want them to be, but because either I have to be out there removing stuff so you can keep farming those areas or the areas, the buffers get bigger. Um, so. He knows, he's aware of the rules. He farms at other places in Forest Lake and knows the rules, um, so. Um. And did you have some earth moving equipment out there? Yes. And could you talk to me about what you were doing, please, and where you're at with the conservation district? Um, yeah, two things out there, I guess, are, it's a longer story than that, but um, we've been having people dumping garbage like crazy, and as I mentioned, the farmer complained that they were running over stuff or hitting construction debris, and um, so we went out there, we actually pulled four dumpster loads of construction tin, concrete blocks, um, shingles out of areas that were on the edge of the wetlands, they're just dumping them in there. Um, so four dumpsters, we pushed dirt back into that. And as far as I'm um, with Jay Riggs, he's been sent us an, a letter, we actually have permission from the city of Forest Lake from 1997, which I sent a copy to, that we can actually fill that area and that it's, it's an accidental or a, I don't know if that's the right word, but they, I could give you the sheets for that. But it's an incidental wetland based on when they took the dirt out of there for my building um, 35 and the overpass on 8. So they, we had permission from the city. We hadn't filled it in, which we probably should have done immediately after that was done. But um, we kept, it was dry enough, so we never had issues with it. And then as the water started to back up, because basically because of the garbage being dumped there and it's been wetter, it's, it's been growing. And so we finally said, so we got to fix this problem. So. Uh, but Jay was comfortable, the gentleman from um, Washington County Soils, with that letter. I know the spring, we were, or sometime this winter, we're still gonna go out there and take a look when um, it's not so cold, and um, I think that'll resolve the issue. He, he felt comfortable with that. We also, I guess one thing too, there was a ditch out, the ditch that runs along lines, mm -hmm. and it looked like someone had filled in that ditch a little bit in the middle part of it, and we didn't know if it was erosion, though part of me thinks, and I don't want point fingers, but I'm thinking someone from the other side of the road may have done that to help build up the backwater into their property so they could water their trees. Um, so we went out there and kept the elevation where it was supposed to be. We kind of worked backwards and so it was a flatter ditch and there was a hump in the center that was holding back about a foot and a half of water that shouldn't have been sitting back on that pond and that was flowing, like I said, back into the culvert that went underneath Lyons and into someone else's property on the west side of Lyons Street. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Next, we'll open up the public hearing. So once we open up the public hearing, if anyone in here present wishes to state anything of interest on this item, we would ask that you come up to the podium and uh, we'll do our best we can at listening. So public hearing is open. Is there anyone that would like to speak?
It appears that there's no one that wants to speak for the public hearing, so we'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission for consideration of a decision. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> this uh, section to the, the, tri the triangular shape second section to the south there that's zoned differently, is it, is the reason that staff is not recommending that that be included in this, is that, is it because of this process that we'd have to basically go through the same process or is it just that what the, what the zoning of that property actually is? It's really the zoning. Um, the, uh, you know, I, I believe that this, you know, Mr. Smith's use of the land, even though it's within this re residential and commercial zoning districts, it's really kind of isolated, you know, back from Broadway. I mean, I think probably most residents aren't, aren't really aware it's there. You can kind of look out that direction, you can see wetlands. Um, so it's pretty isolated and it, it's really specific to this property. Um, once the, once the, uh, you, you switch that to the MXR1 zoning, you know, which comprises about 16% of the, of the city, and suddenly it's no longer an isolated situation. Um, and there's many cases throughout, um, especially in the, in the southwest, you know, portion of the city. I'll pull up the zoning map here. You can see the MXR1 zoning district by the, the tan color. Um, and currently there are many places where, um, you know, Farming is a uh, non-conforming use for these areas. Um, but I, to me, it seems to open up a whole series of other issues, um, perhaps potentially other applications where um, really the, the, um, you know, the intent is to have, um, you, know, you know, development follow through there and not have interim use permit that might hinder that, that uh, you know, that development. So, so how would a how would an interim use permit hinder development? That, that doesn't make sense. I don't I don't understand that. I mean he can he can end his agricultural activities anytime he's ready to um, develop the property and go ahead. I, I'm I'm not trying to be difficult here. I'm just trying to understand the thinking behind this. I it just seems to me you know you know this I. I because of my work, I understand this buckthorn issue. It's most people have no idea that it's that it's problem, and it, it you know pretty much have to overtake us like kudzu has in the southern part of this country before we're going to do something about it. You know, because it's green and and it doesn't matter that it's invasive and it's not you know it's not native to Minnesota, but it's taken over. There are a lot of us that buckthorn bust. What's that? There are a lot of us that buckthorn bust. <laughs> but uh, I just, uh, you know, if, if, you know, if tilling that land or, you know, giving it agricultural use would keep it, you know, keep that from hap, you know, keep buckthorn from taking over or suckers, you know, brush that sort of thing. I, I guess I'm not, I'm not understanding why that would be a detriment. It just seems like it would be better to be able to keep the land clear of, if it's going to be developed land, clear of having this, um, you know, the unwanted stuff grow on it. And, and tilling the land is one way to do that. No, I understand that perspective. I, get, I look at it more globally as far as um, not wanting to increase tensions between agricultural uses, which you know, modern day farming is something of an industrial use um, with large equipment, late hours, noise, dust. Um, and, you know, currently, you know, there are, you know, obviously, you know, areas where residential is abutting, you know, agricultural uses. Um, but it seems like it's one more step further to formalize that. Um, and, you know, there, and there is a specific clause within the zoning code that does allow act remain as a non legal non-conforming use in areas, um, you know, kind of a, you know, ag protection clause. 
um, you know, a right to farm in a way. But, uh, you know, I think the reason why I, I do support rec recommend, recommending this, support a recommend, I should cl clarify, it's a uh, planning commission, um, in this case, offers a recommendation, you know, it, the, the um, city council making the uh, final decision on interim use permits as well as zoning text amendments. Um, and, uh, but the reason I can recommend it is it, you know, when I see it as an isolated, um, isolated parcel behind Menards, kind of buffered by wetlands around it and not having that, uh, any sort of um, tension between neighbors and the agricultural use. Yeah, I um, understand that. But I, but so doing the zoning text amendment, you don't feel like that is going to, um, um, the global, you know, looking at it community-wise, that that's going to, we, are, are there enough of the, these kinds of, of, of this set of circumstances to warrant that versus not doing that on the, on this other type of zoning? But that must be your thinking. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, and obviously it's an interim use permit is required for any, you know, if it, it if another application came forward within an MXR1 zone, um, and, you know, council would be free to, you know, decide one way or the other with that one. Um, I just, I see it as something to invitation and I, you know, I guess I'm cautious on that one. Okay. Excuse me. Can I still, I don't know if I'm hearing over, can I just comment on this at all, or is that right? Is the commission okay with it? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, just, I, when I asked for that piece, it was more just because part of the land that we have been farming is in that area. I mean, we haven't, we don't, I didn't intend to mo go right up to those, the, the homeowner's properties. I just wanted to, if you look at the dry, one of the aerial photos, if you could show you that, you'll see that I actually f have farmed into that area. And I just want to keep doing the area. I didn't want to, I wasn't asking to go all the way to the house. It's just, a, it's a PID. So, I mean, I could have drawn some line on the paper and said, here's where I want to keep farming. Yeah. So if that makes sense. So I, I would like to farm that whole thing and keep that down. But I, did, I didn't want to go up to the housing and I never planned that because I know that would cause controversy with the people in, I think it's Evergreen estates or um, something evergreen. That's, that's all I had yeah. for comment. Okay, so it's that northwest corner of that then. Yeah, that little, those two little thumbs coming down. Yeah, yeah. You correct. See where I'm, and that was just quite a ways from the sure. existing homes. There's trees in between there, and I don't plan on going any farther than that because you can't, there are little islands out there of uplands anyways. It's not where you'd have to drive through a wetland to get to them, so. I just want to do the continuation, the continu where it's contiguous. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm asking for. But. <clears throat> Thank you. So is it possible to craft something that allows that, or are we just is it does it open a can of worms that is a, a global problem for you here, or a community-wide problem? Well, I mean, putting in the MXR one zone district puts it in that area. That's you know. If, you know, a few thousand acres. Um, it's, uh, I mean, you know, and, and, you know, I understand Mr. Smith's point here, you know, because, you know, that's the reason I brought this up. I mean, there's, there's a great wetland buffer between the high ground and the homes on Elston here. Um, but that's not gonna be in every case. Hey, Donovan, how many feet away is the current farming spot to the nearest or approximately the nearest home there. You can go say, yeah. all right, like here to that's to the house, maybe six seventy feet. So if we put a condition in there, allowing that parcel to be included, and said something. That one looks a little closer. If we said something like no closer than 550 feet to the nearest developed parcel, would that satisfy your des desire to have the global issue across the city? Setting a precedence where we're allowing it here where I think 
several of us or all of us may believe this seems reasonable to farm that. Do you think that the, you mean to actually amend the zoning text amendment so that it's interim use, not, you know, no closer than 500 feet from a, uh, say, single family residential use? Well, just from a residential use? I don't know that I'd want to put a footage in the zoning code, but I would not be, I wouldn't object to having it as a condition like, the interim use permit? Yeah. Yes, on the interim use permit, so that it set the precedence that said, here's why we're allowing this here, mm -hmm. so that you don't have, um, you know, a neighborhood and then all of a sudden farming going right up to the backyard and causing the issues you mentioned earlier. Which it doesn't appear that I've never heard an issue of farming on this particular parcel annoying neighbors and certainly no one spoke at the public hearing about that concern. Just let him put a rooster there. <laughs> what was that? Just let him put a rooster there and then, then we'll hear. <laughs> oh, sorry. Not funny. It does say crops only. I don't think <laughs> roosters are crops. Uh, there's an issue with the definition. <laughs> Down the tan area, the, this, this triangle piece that we're talking about, is that the MX R3 or the MXR1? That is MXR1. Here, here's that line that distinguishes between MXR3 to the north. Okay. And then MXR1 here. Okay. You know, I can just pop that in. You can see. Mr. Chairman, you know, I understand this, the desire on the part of the city attorney to kind of tighten things up, and I... Um, you know, ultimately that probably makes our job easier. No. Um, although I'm not 100% convinced of that because of the number of variants, you know, because of the number of actions that we have to take that are variances. But um, that's a discussion for another time. And I, I, you know, I don't have any objection to him farming the tillable part of this property here and it just seems like if we've got um, you know if each one of them uh, if you if you have an interim use permit for every single one of these uh, that comes in um, you can um, you know you can yay or nay it um, you know I, I realize there's something to be said for precedent and thank you and 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 all of that but um, it it just seems re it just seems reasonable to me here to allow, you know, farming of that because it's the clo at the even that little thumb that sticks in close there is still four or five hundred feet from the property line of the of the nearest houses and it looks like there's there's a good stand of trees between that and and the houses as well, but you know. I mean, I, I do see a, a middle middle way here. You know, if at a condition that relates to you know some you know buffer for this interim use permit, but then actually the recommendation then for the um, for the zoning text amendment doesn't include the MXR one. Yeah. I mean, that seems mm -hmm. like that. It, uh, I didn't state that quite that eloquently, but I, uh, that's kind of what, I mean, I, th I think we have the protection that we need with the interim use process. And I, I, I know it's gonna, it's gonna come back to uh, pre you know, precedent, I, I know that, but I mean, what are there? A dozen potential, you know, at this point in time in history, are there a dozen potential pieces of property where this could potentially be an issue if somebody else wanted to make it an issue? I mean, what, 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 magnitude-wise, what are we, what are we, what are we talking about here? What's the potential problem? I, and I don't want to drag this thing out. Unnecessarily, but it, I'm just I'm 
just wondering if there's that many real situations, and I didn't research it. I didn't try to yeah. figure out if what what the magnitude of the potential uh, precedent problem could be. Right, right. I mean, I, I agree with you that I think there's a limited universe of uh, potential properties. Um, I just, I guess I'm cautious with uh, zoning text amendments for those unintended consequences. Um, yep. and in I many cases, I mean, it wouldn't be the current agricultural user who would apply for these because they already have the protection as a non-conforming use. Um, and they, they may not want to have, go into this potential interim use permit that where council could potentially restrict, you know, the agricultural uses like, it is, like it's done here. Um, but we could probably spend another half hour talking about that. Why this particular piece of property, you know, why there is the interim use here and, and something that's not grandfathered in because it's always been there. Yeah, I there can before the zoning came. Well, yeah, I just I, my my just looking at the the record from the 2012 IUP process, you know, it appears that that time the city determined that ag, ag use had not been established, but but I also see that at that time Mr. Smith was also saying that there was, you know, historical agriculture use. So, we're still at that point, I think. Okay. Other discussion or a motion? Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd, I'd be willing to make a motion. I'm going to make a motion here that we uh, recommend to the um, City Council, you know, approval of this request, including the uh, non-wetland tillable portion of that, um, which zoning is that? The MXR1. The MXR1 parcel here. There's a motion. Is there a second? I'll second the motion for discussion. I have one question for the maker of the motion. Does the motion include, or is your intent to include all of the eight staff recommendations as written? Which is nine. There's a misnumbering. Sorry. Oh, there's two twos. I, I, I the nine staff recommendations. I'm making the motion there. I, you know, I understand. <clears throat> so there were six. Okay, here we go. See, there's a there. I, <laughs> there's a there. This one can number six. The upland areas may be cleared and grubbed except for the 25 foot natural buffer areas required to be maintained around wetlands to prepare the ground that, for that, agro. That, that makes sense. Okay, that's, no, I mean, it makes your, sense, but that I just want to make sure that that was limiting enough for us, and I guess that it probably would be because the wetlands aren't going to go away. They're all, you know, they're... And so, they, yes. And that they were taking care of those now? Yeah. So I would, including these eight conditions, and so do I need to make what I said a ninth condition of this? It's your it's your motion. You can certainly change it if you wish, or I can. Well, if, if uh, I can withdraw and you can rewrite it another way, or we can accept somebody else's. I'm open well, to let's, anything. Let's you go. Wish. Let's go with a motion that includes th this parcel of land here. And if you, it needs to, if we need, when we do it for the record, if we need to make that into a condition, that's we'll do that. And so just to be for. Greater clarity for that southernmost parcel PID 07032213005. That is MXR1 zoned. Yes. Yeah, that, right. that and that was that. the part that, that I'm uncomfortable with on the motion is that we're not clear that we're including that portion of the MXR1 mixed residential district. 
But I want it to be clear. Right. That we are including. So it, it's I'm that sorry. the PID is listed. I'm trying right? to be difficult. I just right. yeah. If you look up there and the finds a fact, it lists that actual PID. You can include that. Okay. So let's do that. Okay. So you didn't. Oh, it's not in the recommendation. It's up here. Yeah, because I listed yeah, an individual just to be clear. So yes. Okay. The motion could include that PID as well. So that is, that's the P, PID 07032 Is that the one? Okay, so that's, that's, in the mo, that's in the motion. That's added. I mean, it, it's added to the recommendation here. I'm, I'm just butchering this terribly. <laughs> I feel bad. I should have written it down. Do you want me Wait, to read I'll it? withdraw my motion so we can have greater clarity. Okay. Is there other discussion or another motion? Commissioner Young? Okay. I move approval of an interim, interim use permit for the owner, Mark Smith, to conduct agricultural activities um, on the property zoned B2 Highway Business, MXR 1. That's a mixed residential district, correct? Single and townhouse residential okay. district. And MXR 3 mixed residential district with the PIDs um, 07. Point zero three two point two one point two one point zero zero two zero zero seven point zero three two point two one point two three point zero 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 four zero seven point zero three two point two one point two two point zero 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 two zero six point oh three two point two one point three four point zero zero eight six zero six point zero three two point two one point three four point zero zero eight three 06.032.21.34.0053 and 07.032.21.23.005 subject to the eight staff recommendations nine, nine. nine staff recommendations oh i apologize thank you did you get all that? Like there's, there's a motion. Absolutely. Is there a, is there you want me to read it back? I'll second that motion. I'm not even kidding. I'll read it back. <laughs> there's a motion and a second. Um, did, was somebody asking to have it read back? No. <laughs> Do you want me to read it back to you? No. I don't. don't I actually I caught it. <laughs> is there discussion on that? Uh, Mr. Chair, we had talked a little bit about uh, the distances from the homes uh, with part of this uh, approval of this mixed use uh, interim use permit of around 550 feet. Did we want to have any further discussion on that or do we feel a buffer uh, would be a, a, the natural buffer would be enough here to the motioner? Mr. Chairman, um, in regard to that particular issue, I, I'm, I'm trying to understand what we would gain by that because I don't think that the, um, I think in this particular case, you've got the wetland buffer that's going to be there come rain or come shine, and it's not going to change. So I don't know, I mean, this interim, am I understanding this correctly, that this would be an interim use permit f for just this piece of property? I mean, I suppose- This permit is for this piece of yeah. property. The entire so, piece as it stands. So do we need, you know, I don't know, maybe we, do we need to describe that, the, that portion of the land? I, I think the discussion was, if somebody else came forward in the future that maybe had a piece uh, that was zoned MXR1, if we don't have some sort of conditions on it and we don't have a limitation, they could build right up to potentially residential houses. Well, but they would still have to get the They permit. would have to have an individual conditional use permit, which we can set conditions on just as we're setting conditions this evening. Um, we had talked about having what would be a, a tenth condition um, that he, that cropping not occur 
closer than 500 feet to the homes. And if, if, if that is something, I would consider an amendment to my motion. If that is something that, that the commissioners are interested in. I'm personally okay with it either way. Um, I think that we've made it clear in the record that the distance from these homes is one reason that we're open and considering this piece. Mm -hmm. I think the, uh, the heavy wetlands and woodlands that will mitigate noise issues and Limit. all of those types of pieces makes this uniquely acceptable. Um, and I think that, you know, the setting the precedence, whether it's an emotion <coughs> or the record, to me, I'm okay with it either way. But if oh, commissioners have a preference one way or another, I'm completely fine with it either direction we're going here. Mr. Hart, do you have a pre preference one way or the other? I like the simplicity of retaining the, uh, the wetland buffers. In this case, it really is, you know, the, these are conditions applied to this, this property. Um, and okay. it, you know, Extensive I, wetland there that will require Pretty much that 500 foot. Okay. I just discussion. I'm guessing that thumb in that whole area there is not even right. usable right. because of buffers. Did that get a second? It did. Yes, I did. Thank you. Is there other discussion? Thank you. All right. There is a there is a motion for approval with nine staff conditions on a long list of property numbers. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 No. Motion carries. Did we have a second? There was this. It was you. Okay. Thank you. And we'll move on to the zoning text amendment, including agricultural activities as an interim use in the B2 highway business and MXR3. Mixed residential zoning districts will have staff present. Yes. Is there an applicant on this too? I'm this is staff sponsored um, as part of the the zoning code cleanup. Okay. And then we'll hold a public hearing and then we'll bring it back to the commission. So, Donovan. Okay, I'm gonna pull the text up. Um, so. You know, this basically, you know, would codify within the, the zoning code um, that within the MXR3 zoning district, um, you know, agricultural uses would be listed as an interim use. And then for the Highway B2 district, that agriculture uses would be allowed as an interim use within that commercial zoning district. Um, and this is with a... Again, this is where the, the plan commission makes a recommendation and uh, city council makes the final decision. And so this is, you know, what we discussed earlier, and this is the staff recommendation to, to modify it like this, just with these two zoning districts, you know, modified. Are there questions from commissioners? Commissioner Young? Okay. So to be clean, as you wish, we're going to have to add 153.320, mixed residential, single family and townhouse, MXR1 district to this ordinance. And we're going to have to add section F, which currently has uses, um, interim uses as Towers, uses as determined by the Planning Commission and topsoil removal. I think that that is what I am looking at here. Yep. Um, and so in, in order to, to make this clean, we are going to have to amend the draft ordinance, um, changing Section 3, the effective date, to Section 4, and adding a Section 2 which I can probably do um, because it would follow the same um, outline and text as, as the sections 153.322 and 153.328. However, 
since this is a proposed ordinance that the Planning Commission is looking at, does this need to be published as an ordinance entire before we are allowed to vote on it? Can you answer that one, Karen? I think when we are publishing ordinances, usually it's a resolution summary of the ordinance that gets published, otherwise it gets way too right. long. Um, but I'm adding a significant section and a, what yeah. could be considered a significant change to this draft ordinance by adding an entire zoning district. So my guess is Bridget, city attorney, would say that that piece of it could be added to the summary ordinance, so the summary resolution that would be published as changes <clears throat> to the ordinance. Okay. And we, we haven't published anything yet, and there is time, because <coughs> it wouldn't be, uh, you know, there is a city council meeting next week, but, you know, um, this is something I want to delay until the February 10th meeting okay. to discuss. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. Did you have other questions? I don't have any other oh. questions. Um, I have one of staff. So the... Bottom line on each of section one and section two says uses as determined by the planning commission and city council. Um, and I'm not entirely comfortable with that language because it implies that you have to have something approved by both bodies. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. So it just be and or or yeah. well the but planning commission like approved, it says determined. I mean <laughs> you know. So it's I, I mean I, I want to think that language is intentional that they're not saying approved because sometimes there is plank you know, plan commission recommendation denial and then council approval. In other words, just as the interim use permit is, we make a recommendation and it is approved <coughs> by the council, then those uses would be recommended by the planning commission and approved by the council. It would be, it, it's congruent to the process that we're going through right now for this particular piece of property. But, Mr. Chairman, I, I mean, I understand your point here, though. If... Well, okay, it just says uses as determined by the Planning Commission, but it does, the, I mean, theoretically, the Planning Commission, uh, something could be presented to the com Planning Commission could be turned down and it would still go to the, it would still go to the City Council and they oh, could deal. approve it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I also think this is a vestige of that earlier era where they did, were a little more loosey-goosey and just kind of, you know, by parcel by parcel, said, okay, that's the use. I mean. We uh, reprocessed the Knife River, you know, cement batch plan expansion as a CUP. Well, you know, man, you know, we could call it manufacturing, but or like, you know, it's not that use isn't really listed in the in the zoning code, you know, under conditional uses for that 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 V3 district, you know. So, but then they needed this other other section. But that's to me that seems like more a wholesale. When we get to the conference of rezoning, maybe we'll we'll excise these kind of more loosey-goosey, you know, more flexible statements for the more defined listing of the uses as we're doing now. And I, and I don't mean for it to take away from the, the bigger picture discussion on this item. I, I, I understand the intent of staff. I agree with the intent of staff on, on that piece in there. Um, perhaps we should have the attorney look at it before council is finally presented with it so that language is written as best legally possible. Yeah, I mean, the, the city attorney did, did review this draft. Yes. Yep. Okay. Another discussion? We have a public hearing on this as well. So we'll open up the public hearing. So if anyone wishes to speak on this issue from the public, we're going to ask you to come up to the podium. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak? 
Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. We'll bring it back to the commission for a motion of recommendation to council. Commissioner Young? Okay. I am basing my motion on the draft ordinance that is presented to us, uh, an ordinance amending title 15, chapter 153. It will be sections 153.22, 153.32, 153.32, 153.32, 153.32, 153.320 and 153.328 related to interim uses in the mixed residential MXR3 district, the mixed residential single family and townhouse MXR1 district, and the highway business B2 district. Um, section 1 of the draft stands um, as written. Section 2 of the draft stands as written. Section 3 would become Title 15. Chapter 153, Section 153.320 Amendment, the provisions of Title 15, Chapter 153, Section 153.320, including Subdivision F of the Forest Lake City Code, are hereby amended as followed, um, with the underlying text being the additions and the struck out text deleted, and the um, Section, the new section 3F would be interim uses subject to applicable provisions of this chapter. The following interim uses in the MXR1 district PREN requires an interim use permit based upon procedures set forth in and regulated by section 153.035 and PREN. Place of um, it, one would be towers that is in the existing code. Two would be uses as determined by the Planning Commission, that is in the existing th code. Three would be topsoil, as is in the existing code. Four would be agricultural uses, that would be underlined as new language. Five now would be uses as determined by the Planning Commission and City Council as existing language. Previous drafted section three becomes section four with the effective date um, as is and the final sentence as is. There's a motion, is there a second? Good job. I'll there second it. There's a motion and a second, is there discussion? Uh, Mr. Commissioner, Donovan, are we looking at uh, that uh, text code right here, 153.320? I don't yes, see the top yeah. number. This is the current MXR1 okay. zoning district I standards. Saw, I saw a lot of the 320. Could you slowly scroll through that again? <laughs> there. And and sir, what I'm doing is they've got the the, the three in there, and and I'm just trying to keep it. Kind yep. Of a... No, it's good catch. Okay. Is there other discussion? Anyone requesting to have it reread? No. Okay. <laughs> Do you have all of it, Karen? Perfect. I got a video I can watch later, so yeah, there's I got a, it all. <laughs> there's a motion and a second. I don't see any further discussion, so all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 No. Motion carries. Item number eight was removed. We don't have another business on here. Was that intentional, Donovan? Um, no, but we already approved the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at adjournment. I'll make a motion to adjourn. There's a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 No? Motion carries. We're adjourned. Mr. Gerard, was there anything that you wanted to convey to us? We appreciate your wisdom. Thank you. Yeah, I do. <laughs> now that we're adjourned. Okay. Good evening, Commissioners. Now, I have nothing for you today. Um, as you, I believe you all know, uh, Commissioner Black is, is vacating this position, so um, I believe that there's no one in the wings as such. 
So I don't believe at this time the mayor is ready to make a recommendation. <clears throat> excuse me, a recommendation for uh, another commission member. I believe she's gonna, they're gonna open it up. I don't know exactly how wide they're gonna open it up. I don't know, we've just kicked off the year. We've, uh, we've only met twice, once for the first meeting of the year and then a workshop yesterday. Um, so not a lot to, to cover today. Happy, happy to answer any questions. So, so I'm just curious what your thinking is on the, uh, the timing on the approval of the comp plan. Yeah. I'm being mean, I know. Can we adjourn or what? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we, I'm just asking for We're an opinion. We're being collegial. <laughs> have, you uh, don't have to answer that. I, you don't have to answer that. Because I don't have an answer for you. I'll, I'll, I talk, I talk, I, uh, I'll talk to the sector rep tomorrow morning, and she thinks that they <clears> just got back the last technical comments, so I want to think that I was just curious. it's going to make it through the Met Council in the next couple weeks. Anything else I cannot answer? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.